you know, th this Jeskai control deck was actually the kind of the first deck I started testing just to kind of prepare for this event. This was kind of a known quantity at the time. The Jeskai turns deck wasn't um, as prevalent. And uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's a solid deck. If you want to play a control deck in a format, this is the deck to, to bring. And I imagine that whatever configuration that Kenji has, Kenji brings to this event will have those top two decks in mind. And the nice thing about the, these control decks is you can kind of tool and configure your decks and change a couple of cards here and there to kind of help shore up those matchups. By the way, we're coming in on game number two. Kenji took about 10 minutes to pick up that first win against Matt. Let's see <clears throat> what the sideboard plan looks like here from Spurling. You know, we're gonna assume something similar to what Luis did. And you see the uh, Shark Typhoon straight away in hand here for Spurling. So he's at least brought those in and gonna try to give Kenji all he can handle with a, a much different version of the deck. Yeah, it's kind of funny though. When you look at Kenji's hand, you can, it just looks like the hand of a Jeskai turns deck, right? You see Magma Opus and Mizix's Mastery in his hand. Um, and the, 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 you know, the reason being is Kenji's playing the Jeskai control version that has Torrential Gear Hulk, right? So mm -hmm. you already want to be playing Magma Opus in your deck because that's a really powerful interaction. But Kenji also recognizing that, hey, you know what? Mizix's Mastery is kind of a good magic card. I want to play some in my deck as well, even though I'm not maximizing it the way that the Jeskai Turns deck is doing. That's right. And, you know, looking at, at this type of hand, you can see why. <clears throat> if there's a Magma Opus in the yard, Mizix's Mastery already <clears throat> could have been fired off here on turn three for Aegashira. Now, maybe that's not where he wants to be. Um, you know, you, you have to use up some pretty valuable resources to, to do that. Uh, perhaps a little better in, in matchups where your opponent's putting a bunch of small creatures on the battlefield early and you need to kind of clean up the mess. But still, having access to that is great. And then, you know, we can't say enough about it, right? Overloaded Mizix's Mizix Mastery. That might be the kind of signature play for the whole weekend here for Historic, as we already saw Luis do it twice and win his match both times, or win the games both times that he did it. Yeah, and you're going to notice that these players are going to be very aware that, that exists and try to navigate the games in such a way where you can kind of try to play around it, keep up counter spells, make sure you don't get blown out by the overloaded Mizix's Mastery. Now, Kenji, uh, as he's the control deck, he has access to a few more slots. So he does have some graveyard hate cards available to him. He is playing uh, multiple copies of Soul Guide Lantern, which I think is going to be pretty important here uh, because that'll basically shut off one of the avenues that Matt will look to um, as a kind of a, a road to victory. Yeah, it's, it's been interesting to see how players have started to adapt to the strategy that Matt's brought to the table. Um, you start, you're starting to see uh, more graveyard hate, but some kind of specific forms of it pop up here and there. It's, it's getting, you know, Silent Gravestone is starting to pop up a little here and there. Of course, the decks that have access to the more hard removal for the graveyard, you'll, you'll be seeing that as well. And it is, it is good. It, it actually works quite well, um, just being able to to turn off cards like Mizix's Mastery or um, Mizix's Mastery off of Velimachus or any of that type of stuff, it, it works pretty well. well. One thing to note, though, is the fact that Kenji has the Mizix's Mastery means that Matt also needs to be really scared, right? Matt needs to be aware that that's something that Kenji can also do. So mm -hmm. Matt Sperling, their team's primary game plan here against Jeskai control decks is Nezahal, right? Build up your mana, get to Nezahal, slam Nezahal because you know that for the most part, Jeskai control decks can't do a whole lot to Nezahal. But now, if you slam a Nezahal, there is a real possibility that your opponent can then overload Mizix's mastery and maybe kill you depending on what's in their graveyard, right? So, totally. You know, th th there, is, there is something there. Now, of course, you're casting a million spells. Sperling will be able to draw a bunch of cards. But at the same time, you know, you could see Kenji getting a bunch of magma opuses out of the graveyard and put them into play yeah you know nezahal feels like it should be the kind of door slammer on the game but th there are bigger things you can do uh if you have any semblance of control over the game or any time beyond it then it then it is that uh, it really is just you're not going to beat that card it's effectively impossible to kill and it provides insane amount of value for its controller while presenting a very quick clock so that's that's going to be really tough but yeah, if you get to untap and, and overload a mastery, you can go over the top. Both players playing uh, the kind of setup game here. Nobody's really made a big 
move yet. It's a lot of brainstorms, expressive iteration, and posturing here as the players kind of try to set up for the big stuff later. But boy, are we going to see some fireworks down the line. You can see both players have access to some really powerful stuff, particularly Kenji with the mastery and the uh, torrential gear hulk in hand with magma opus on top of his library. There's one in his yard too, I think. Um, yeah, so he's got access to some absolute haymakers. It looks like he's going to test the waters with Narset here, Paul. Yeah, running out a Narset here. Um, just, just trying to find some more answers. Wow, a lot of good options here. Jeez. Dov Dovin's veto is especially strong because this means that uh, if your opponent goes for that indomitable creativity, you will just for sure have an answer and there's nothing that your opponent can do. It's, That's the, right. it's the ultimate card against a combo deck, right? Because you just kind of shut them off. There's no counter war that you have to worry about. Yeah, the, the game plan from Sperling and company post-board, which I'll remind you we're in game two here, is that they you know, are trying to present uncounterable threats in the form of Nezahal and Shark Typhoon to get around you know, whatever the opponent's trying to do with regards to counter spells. And, you know, you can see the power in that. Look at Kenji's hand. And remember, Kenji has sculpted this hand himself. He's got double memory lapse and now a veto. And those cards that we mentioned don't, don't care about those cards. So, you know, it does get kind of interesting when you look at that sideboard plan from Sperling to see, oh, I can see why that would work. Now, Kenji does have to um, protect himself from you know, the cards that we mentioned, like Overloaded Mastery, but also he has really powerful stuff he can do and he can use these cards to protect himself because they're pro they're proactive cards from Matt Sperling that are uncounterable, but, you know, he still has to fight the same fights for a Torrential Gear Hulk or whatever, and Kenji can win those those battles. Yeah, Ooh, Kenji. here we go. Bit, first big play from Kenji. He's going to go for Mizzix's Mastery on Magma Opus. He has five mana left over with Memory Lapse times two and a Veto. And he should be able to push this through. Yeah, and so typically what you want to do is let the Magma Opus resolve if you're going to counter it. And then if with the Memory Lapse, if you Memory Lapse the Magma Opus that's being cast from the graveyard, it just exiles it forever, meaning mm -hmm. that you don't have to worry about it. Whereas if you Memory Lapse the Mizzix's Mastery, well, he's just going to cast it again next turn. Right. You, you, meant mem you mean let the Mastery resolve. Right. right? Sorry. Yeah, the, yeah. Let the Mastery resolve and then put yep. the Magma Opus on the stack. And that's what we see here. So Kenji has to decide how he'd like to fight. Again, he has two, two shots to fire here. He's got his option on double memory lapse or memory lapse plus veto in either order. Yeah, this is interesting. I feel like he really wants to make sure that he keeps the veto in hand, right? To make sure that you have an answer to creativity. Might just let it resolve and uh, just kind of start chipping away at whatever counter magic that Matt Sperling could have. One other thing to note is that, you know, if you think that your opponent uh, is in a really good position to maybe go for a really big Shark Typhoon, right? Mm -hmm. By casting something and having him counter, you take a little bit less damage, you know, buy yourself a little bit more time. True. Uh, so you don't just die to Shark Typhoon because that is, uh, I would say one of the primary ways that this Jeskai turns deck is trying to win after sideboard, right? It's mm -hmm. boarding in the full four copies of Shark Typhoon out of the sideboard. So you're just trying to hit your land drops, play this game of draw go, and just chip away at your life total and then just sh cycle Shark Typhoons at end of turn and hope, hope that that kind of puts enough pressure on your opponent to kind of force them into uncomfortable situations so that, you know, maybe then you can kind of resolve some of your haymakers later. Here's a Soul Guide Lantern off the top for Kenji. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> it is funny because, you know, you, as you described it, kind of chipping away, but take a look. Kenji's at 10. He's facing down five power. He has three counter spells and a gear hulk in his hand. He is going to need to do something. He's going to die in two turns if he doesn't. Right. I mean, you know, he can make a Castle Ardenvale token and trade and buy himself an extra turn that way, but uh, it's still pretty quick clock. Yeah, and uh, funny thing too is, uh, you know, with all the Prismari commands being played, Curious to see how good Torrential Gear Hulk's gonna be this week because Prismari Command also kills artifacts. It's a really mm -hmm. clean way to uh, kill a Torrential Gear Hulk and get a little value in the process. It looks like uh, Sperling with the Prismari Command is actually considering if he'd like to cast it, perhaps to see some fresh cards from his library. He, 
He also could go upstairs with it if he wants. It looks like he's going to go for treasure token, draw two, discard two. Do you yeah. think Kenji's feeling a little pressure here to just start un unloading some of these counters to just do something? Well, I, I don't think the Prismari command um, is too much of a concern, mm -hmm. right? But he will want to counter something. And if you're on Matt's side, he's probably just looking for more uncounterable cards, right? Right. You know, he's ideally looking for more Shard Typhoons or Nezahal. Um, additionally, you know, you saw him create a treasure here. So um, you're not necessarily even going for Kenji's life total, but more despite the fact that Kenji's at 10, but more maybe looking for a scenario where he can go double Indomitable Creativity, right? And, and hope yeah. that one of them sticks because he does have Mystical Dispute backup for one of them. Sperling found one of his three Mystical Dispute now. He, he is prioritizing keeping those Indomitable Creativities. If he can set up the proper turn, he can turn that into a Neza Hall. All right, here we go. This is a big one <laughs> oh, now man. for Kenji. Kenji's going to go for the Upkeep Torrential Gear Hulk for Megma Opus, it looks like. And he's just got the one counter available. So there's Mystical Dispute. And if he counters this back, then work, Spur... Right? Then yeah, he it'll it'll work, but then Sperling can can uh, creativity for Nezahal. Let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, you're right. He can. Right, because there's no way for Kenji to use a magma opus to just get rid of all the permanents in play. No, not at all. He he can get rid of two of the creatures, but that'll leave a creature plus the two treasure tokens left over. So, plenty of fodder for the indomitable creativity for Sperling. And Kenji really seems to have found himself in a in a bit of a pickle here. And I don't blame Kenji for going for it here. I mean, if you don't do anything, these creatures are going to just win the game in two turns, right? Right. right. So you just you just kind of have to fight through some of these counters and just kind of hope Sperling has nothing. But we know that Sperling's hand is is just completely loaded here. I mean, Sperling can play a magma opus, but I don't think that's a, that's going to be enough. I think Sperling's probably just going to want to go for the Nezahal here. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of lands will get tapped. The two sharks are going to die here. And that still gives Sperling enough mana. Enough mana. Yeah. Plenty enough, as it turns out. Yeah, the other option here would be to just float all the mana and then just cast the magma opus and kill your opponents 4-4 mm -hmm. but I, f I feel like this is the window to resolve the creativity and I mean you know your Neza Hall's got to be one of the strongest cards in this matchup this is why you have it in your sideboard right for Jeskai control specifically so uh, totally. you know the coast is clear this is the opportunity for Kenji excuse me for Sperling to resolve this creativity and get that Neza Hall. It'd be it'd be funny if um, if Sperling had exactly one Bellamachius and one <laughs> Nezahal, so you can get both. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's Nezahal Primal Tide on the battlefield now for Sperling. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, that is Teferi Hero of Dominaria. So 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 now you can cast. You can cast a fairy and minus on the Nezahal, but Kenji can then discard his. Um, Matt, Matt can discard, discard the entire discard hand. The, the views. Yeah, Matt can discard the hand to basically save the Nezahal. And keep in mind, when Teferi gets cast, Matt will draw a card mm -hmm. off the Nezahal, so he can still choose to keep uh, the Magma Opus that he has in hand. I imagine that's the most valuable card left, as the Indomitable Creativity is not that valuable anymore as he does have the creature that he wants in play. I, you know, it. there are no clean answers for Nezahal for, for Kenji here, but it looks like Teferi's about the best you're gonna get. Yeah, I mean, the other consideration is, I guess, just play Teferi and tick it up. Um, and just leave back the, the creatures? Yeah, but... Okay. And because if you if you if you take it up to five, that means you can't die to Prismari Command. But now, uh, Matt did find a fry here. I would be pretty tempted to just get three cards out of Kenji's hand. 
Excuse me, Sperling's hand? Yeah. Yeah, we've got the... Uh, apologies for any confusion for anybody watching, but we have uh, Kenji's view here. He's actually our top player on our normal view, but we had some frame rate issues on the bottom one, so we're we're sticking with the one that's a little better. I know it can be a little... And, and I'm not having confused. trouble at all. <laughs> uh, I mean, you've probably cast hundreds of matches the other way, so you, you can be forgiven, Paul. Right. Yeah, this could be kind of interesting if we see that Fry kept in hand here for Sperling. It's right, going to be so. Mystical Dispute. And heads up play there from Kenji, who played the untapped Steam Vents for the two, two life. He recognized that that was a possibility. Um, and that oh. does actually tap him out. But now it gets kind of interesting because it will actually cost Matt his entire hand. Yeah. To uh, save Nezahal. He really wanted to... Um... And why did he want to tap him out so bad? I don't know, but now the Nezahal is gone. I, I you oh, know that- because Sperling just says, I don't care. Well, yeah, right, because he does have Indomitable Creativity, so he can just get the Nezahal again next turn. Sure. Right? And, um, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he doesn't have mana to cast Magma Opus and Creativity, but he can still Creativity, get that Nezahal in play, and then fry to Teferi if he wants. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if uh, Sperling doing a, a graveyard check here, excuse me, uh, Kenji. Thinking about the potential for um, a Mizix's Mastery, but given that the Soul Guide Lantern's in play, don't really have to worry about it as he has an on-demand graveyard exile effect here. All right, so let's just get this Nezahal back into play just a, a turn sooner here for, for Sperling. Nezahal's back. Life total's getting low for both players. Kind of interesting. Eight for Kenji, down to seven here for Sperling. <clears throat> both of them have quite a board presence at this point. There's Mystical Dispute off the top. Quick draw a card here from Teferi, and he finds some way to deal with Nezahal once again. It is not quite. Wow, that's close. <laughs> that is but, close. But keep in mind, I mean... Uh, you know, Matt can't really attack with the Nezahal. No. Right? So, you know... Well, it kind of gets interesting because he could go for the limited, you know, like try to set up the double block, remove your... <laughs> right, but Kenji also just can just make 1-1 one, one tokens here off the Castle Arden Veil. Yeah, so, if, so if Matt attacks with Nezahal, Kenji chumps with a token and then just swings back for, for uh, you know, 9 damage. Oh, so Kenji's going to go for it here. So if the Torrential Gear Hulk gets blocked, then he can go for Prismari Command to finish off Nezahal for an additional two. Oh, and this oh. is not... He's, he's also doing it before damage. Yeah, why? Uh, the reason to do it before damage is you get to save your Gear Hulk this way. Or if your Gear Hulk dies, the Nezahal will definitely die, Right. So by having the two damage on Matt, needs to make the decision now, do I want to uh, pitch three cards and exile my Nezahal now? Or do mm. I want to take this trade of Nezahal with Torrential Gear Hulk? Super sweet play here from Kenji. You know, the standard line is to let damage happen. Get the four in, by the way, <laughs> and right. then finish off the creature. But this actually gives him a chance to... We'll put Matt in a real pickle here about whether he wants to get this Gear Hulk off the battlefield. Really cool. This has been a fun game. Yeah. I mean, given the complexion of Matt's hand, I feel like your like Nezahal is your primary way to kind of win this game. Um, and you know, it's not like this extra indomitable creativity is any good. Um, so I would lean towards keeping it. But, I mean, Kenji's looking really good here, actually. Super interesting. Th the way that Prismari command really was a game changer here. As we see Sperling ditch everything but Fry in hand, is he going to have to burn the token here? Keep his life total up? Yeah, that's rough, too, because there's a Teferi in play. Totally. <laughs> He is, though, and he's empty-handed now. He's going to get Nezahal back into play on the end it. step. 
But that's all he's gonna have. And Kenji, while at a precarious life total, is an eight, <laughs> yeah. not seven. Right, he can make a token to block and still keep up Dovin's veto this turn. And he's the one with the Teferi in play. He's the one who's actually getting ahead in cards. That means that Matt doesn't have an attack here that's worth going for, so he's not gonna bother. But Kenji still gets to make the token and the Teferi is ticking up. Has Kenji just uh, secured this thing here? What an incredible sequence. Yeah, I wonder if, can Kenji make two tokens? So if he, if he makes a token and then he untaps Castle, Castle Ardenvale and another land, he can mm -hmm. uh, just kind of continue to make tokens. And keep in mind, by the way, Sperling's down to one card in hand. Next turn, Kenji can simply just minus three on Teferi, tuck away the Nezahal and attack for lethal. That's right. So tons of pressure here on Sperling, and you have to wonder what he could even draw at this point. I mean, especially given... Kenji's hand of Dovin's Veto, Double Memory Lapse, Mystical Dispute. I, it's, yeah. You know, outside of uncounterable spells, he's not resolving anything. Unless Matt finds a counter to match all of Kenji's counters off the triggers from the Nezahal, right? That's... <laughs> there you go. That's right. If they go one for one, yeah. Yeah. Okay, make a thing, and then untap some lands, and then pass. And this could be Spurling's last draw step here. Let's see what he finds. A misstep. That's going to be a misstep for him. And if Kenji decides to go for it, he can just put his Teferi in the bin to tuck Nezahal and attack for exactly enough. And I like that he didn't even make a token there. He didn't want Matt to maybe run out something like a Magma Opus there and just right. choosing to keep those counter spells up. And there we go. Kenji Egashira finds the victory defeats Matt Sperling and Ineza Hall that got onto the battlefield two separate times, Kenji with the line. And you know, it really all came down to that tight technical play that we saw with that at big attack with Kenji's two creatures and Prismari command in hand. That's what ended up winning the game for him there.